Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be looking at this very typical fortress. This has happened in many games. It could very well happen in your game. So uh, the reason why this is a fortress is because there's no way how the black king can enter the uh, the white king can enter the black camp. I mean, if ever the king tries to go through f4, there's going to be either a check on d2 or you know a move like bishop f6. Um, so now the question is, how does white make progress? Well, the only way how a white can make progress is to somehow uh, play for the move g4. And of course, black has to take the pawn on g4. And then, you know, when the rook takes on g4, uh, you, white will get some play on the g6 pawn. So I'm using uh, uh, Dvoretsky's anal analysis in, from his endgame manual. Uh, and uh, in this position, he gives... Um, Two approaches that white can uh, white, white can play for. I mean, uh, they both white has this move king to d5 and the move h4. I mean, both lead to the same sort of idea and how white breaks through the same position basically occurs. So um, h4 was uh, given as one of the main variations, and now black makes very precise move bishop to a1. No, not the move bishop to. Uh, d4 because um, black's uh, white's plan is to basically play the move g4 and when the move h takes this rook from you know the fourth rank will take the pawn and that's why the move rook b4 comes with a very important tempo so bishop c3 rook to c4 bishop uh, back to b2 and g4 hg rook to g4 and uh, king h7 uh, not not uh, so I'm sorry not I should also mention that uh, on the move bishop to e1, white can, has this very nice win uh, with this very precise move rook c6 and the move bishop takes. There's this move king g5 and g6 and h5 are going to fall. So that's why um, uh, bishop b2 is forced. hg, rook takes g4. And now um, on the move king g7, there's the move h5, so now king h7. And that is the reason why white plays the move h4, because it plays against the move king g7. Otherwise, king g7 would be the best move in this position for black. Um, we're, we're on h3, for example. but here the king came to, comes to h7, and the point is that white's king can gain some ground with king f7. King h6 takes on g6, king h5. It looks like white's gonna win, uh, black's going to win the h4 pawn, but then rook to g2 comes with a very important tempo. And uh, on the move like bishop c3, then there's the move rook h2. Now we defend the pawn. Uh, I think if, yeah, so if the move bishop to e1, then probably... A move like king f6 and bishop takes h4, king f5 is took too long. So white wins there. So Dvoretsky gave this variation. And um, this position is actually winning. For white, it's quite uh, complicated. The, the win is n not easy. Um, uh, but uh, uh, at the end of the day, if you're playing against uh, someone who studies uh, these end games, they're going to probably beat you. So. Uh, why not uh, play, uh, defend your position precisely rather than gamble with this move bishop d4? Play the move bishop to a1. Uh, rook to b4. And here's the difference. Now black can make the move king to g7 because now on the move g4 takes takes. Uh, note how in when uh, black played the move bishop d4, this move rook b4 gained that vital tempo and the king was still on g8. Now with the king on g7, black can make the move king h6 very strong move. Because um, on the move, uh, for, first of all, king f7, the point is that now king h5 will happen. And black was just in time to get sufficient counterplay on the h4 pawn. Um, of course, uh, you know, white can try this move rook to g5. But now uh, black has bishop to d4, and the point is that now he will attack the pawn from the f2 square. And uh, yeah, now white cannot defend the h4 pawn. So that is a draw, because we get our our dream of uh, rook versus bishop as black. So now, um, that is why uh, Dvoretsky gave some other approach to play for the win with this move king to d5. So black just keeps waiting on this diagonal. Uh, it's important that the bishop comes to f6 to stop the move king to g5. That would be disastrous if that would be allowed. 
and now g4. Okay, so we just wait as black and this move bishop back to a1, bishop to c3, and bishop to b2. So now uh, h4. Now h4, of course, what means that white is going to now go for uh, switching the rook to the g file and playing for the move h5 on the move king g7. Now um, it's very interesting. Now this move bishop d4 can be played because uh, rook c4, uh, there's this move uh, bishop to e3. The point being that uh, here on the move, uh, for example, king f, uh, sorry, on the move rook to e4, black can just keep the bishop on this diagonal. And of course, on the move king f6, king h7, rook to g4, uh, there's very important bishop c3 check. And the difference between uh, the, pre the other variation is that uh, we get this position where white can uh, attack the bishop with a tempo and defend on h3, but if the move rook to g3, then there's this move bishop to e1, and on the move rook h3, bishop takes h4 comes just in time. So that's why it's uh, this is okay with the bishop on c3. Um, of course, uh, Dorotsky gives us a rook to e2, but then the move bishop c3, and white still hasn't made progress in breaking through. So, um, yeah. So now, um, King f6 is the, I would say, the real test. Black plays the move king h7, rook to g4, king h6. Rook takes g6, which check king h5. And now uh, with the bishop on, e th on e3, on the move, um, uh, the, there's, the white has this move rook to g3. Now, uh, if the move bishop f2 were played in this position, I think white could probably win with the move rook to g2. And on the move, uh, bishop takes h4, king to f5, and I don't see a way how uh, black escapes from the threats of rook to h2. But that's why uh, black has this tricky move, bishop to b6, and on the point being on the move, rook h3. Um, uh, not bishop d8 check immediately, because then king f5, and black will lose, but then yeah, king dg4, which gains the vital tempo on the rook. And once the rook moves away, bishop to d8, and then the next move, we're going to collect the h4 pawn. So everything like just works out. I mean, it's important. It's just important to know that, you know, if you could keep your, uh, if uh, you could have your king on g7 when he gains the tempo, uh, well, well, not when he gains the tempo, but if you have your king on g7 when he puts the rook on the fourth rank, that would be, uh, that would be good. And, uh, but if not, you know, because now he's threatening you know, to go anywhere on the c file and attack the bishop and put the rook on the g file with uh, tempo. So it doesn't really matter. So. Uh, you just have to know this position where king f6, king h7, and white black just barely holds. But, you know, for these concrete reasons, it's a draw because white cannot break through. And if they're white and tries to do something, black gets uh, too much counterplay on the h4 pawn. So if you have any fortresses uh, that you would like me to show on my channel, please leave it in the comments. All right, thanks.